With the nice weather lately, I've been trying to spend as much of my free time as possible outside enjoying nature. In my case, enjoying nature usually means I have a camera connected to me, and most likely distracted by any... every bird that flies past. Whipping around a big lens and chasing everything that flies isn't really the greatest way to get some good bird photos, however. Which brings me to the point of this video. I'm going to give five tips from what I've learned during my time doing wildlife and bird photography. Even though we've had some really nice weather so far coming into the summer, hot midday summer sun may not be the best time to get the shot of the bird you're looking for. You don't even need a camera for my first tip. I recommend doing even just a little bit of research into some of the local species. Apps like Merlin work great for birding, showing you what you can expect in your area and how common. It's great for identifying bird species as well. Where I live, there is also a birding checklist available for just a $2 donation from a local nonprofit organization that promotes the conservation of wildlife and natural resources. Other things to look into include nesting habits, migration, and even diet. Knowing some of these facts can help you not only locate more species in the wild, but it'll help give you a leg up on knowing where and when to be in a good location to catch interesting behaviors. Okay, research done, found a good location where you know the species you were looking for is going to be. Time to whip out that lens and start running, right? Left. Instead of giving chase, you'll have much better luck in waiting for the animal to come to you. A lot of the time, you will run into unwilling models that just don't want to pose nice or even let you get the shot. Don't stress over them. Be patient, and eventually a willing participant should come to you. Remember, there's a good chance if you are larger than what you are trying to photograph, it's going to think you're a potential predator. Especially if you look like you're trying to stalk it. Sitting patiently and quietly will help your model feel more comfortable and less threatened leading to more natural behavior. If you weren't aware of this already, many professional bird photographers will use setups. And they aren't actually spending their day dirty in the woods. What if you just sit and sit and sit and sit and sit and sit and, sit and nothing comes? Well, you could just be in the wrong location or at the wrong time of day or year, whatever. But if that's not the case, attracting birds with sounds works quite well and is also my third tip. Again, I use the Merlin app for this, but there are plenty of other ways of going about this. Even while sitting out in the open, I've had plenty of success attracting and photographing smaller songbirds just by having their calls on repeat on my phone. Many birds respond before you can even see them, and I have had a fairly good number of birds land even closer than my minimum focusing distance while searching for the origin of the sound. Birds coming too close and being unable to focus correctly on them isn't a good tip, you say. To counteract that, I bring you tip number four. Try and plan your perch and your background. This doesn't mean you have to have a full handmade setup. I actually much prefer finding and photographing wildlife in their natural habitat. But that can be quite messy. However, cluttered backgrounds, poor lighting, and so on. Just be mindful in choosing a spot with perches that are a good distance from yourself and not too crowded with other branches or distractions. For a smoother background blur, try and get a perch that's closer to you than it is to the background. 
The last tip that I have is not to go out with high expectations. Don't put yourself in the mindset that you just have to get this one particular photo of this one specific species. That does make for a great goal to set for yourself, but it doesn't have to be everything. Enjoy your time being out, enjoy the process, and relax. You never know what's going to happen or what kind of creature is going to show up. So be open to a change in plans as you go about your adventure. Also on the top of, of expectations, do not expect to get home and have a memory card stuffed full of perfectly exposed in-focus photos. Even professional photographers have a large percentage of their shots that just get binned. I came back from one of my last short adventures with just over 400 shots of different things such as birds and landscapes. But after sorting through all of the different shots, removing the ones that are out of focus, motion blur, under overexposed, or even just the mass amounts of photos trying to get the one specific pose, I ended up keeping around 10% for sharing with others in social media. But that's okay though, as I'm still pleased with the outcome. I'm happy with most of the shots that I took, as are the people that I have shown them to. Not only that, but I had a good time doing it, while also getting exercise and fresh air. And for me, nothing is more relaxing than sitting by some water, listening to the sounds of the birds. These are just some tips that I have come up with through my own experiences. I am by no means an, a professional at this time. I hope my tips can help at least a few of you. And if you have tips of your own, leave them down in the comments for everyone else to see. All of the photos shown were taken by me. If you would like to help support the channel, please leave a like and subscribe for future content. I also have a small Teespring store where I sell a couple of my designs. If you've stayed this long, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.